Hi everyone, this is Sam Gabriel, and in today's video, I want to talk about uh, Packer, Terraform, and VMware. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a template inside of VMware using Packer, and then we're going to use Terraform to build a VM based on that template. So let's get started. Uh, I created this GitHub repo. It's public. You can use it. And uh, what it does, it has two sections. It has the Packer section and it has a Terraform section. Uh, the Packer section, um, I want to give credit to Guillermo Musumichi. I hope I'm saying the name right. Uh, you can see here in the README in the main section, you can access his Medium post and also his GitHub repo. So if we take a quick look at that, uh, here's his Medium post. He goes through building uh, using Packer to build Windows Server templates for VMware vSphere. And he shows you how you can do that uh, with the vSphere ISO provider, which is for uh, vCenter for enterprise um, uh, vSphere. And uh, you can see he has also a section if you want to build Ubuntu uh, templates or CentOS Red Hat. Uh, you can see you can uh, visit those sections as well. But this is a very good well-written post on how to do that step-by-step -step guide. He also has his GitHub repo here, as I mentioned earlier, and it shows you how to build the template for Windows 2016 server and Windows Server 2019 as well. Okay, so how, how does this all work? Uh, if you go into the folder for a Packer vSphere ISO Windows, you'll see a number of folders. There's a scripts folder where we have a bunch of scripts that we'll talk about in just a little bit. And we have a Windows 2016 base template if you want to build a Windows 2016 server image uh, and a Windows 2019 as well. So uh, for this demo, I build a Windows 2019 server image. And I'm just going to walk you through. Um, I'm not going to build it in front of you. It's going to take, it does take a long time. So there's no point in doing that. I'm just going to show you the end result and the configuration so you can do it yourself. So under the Windows 2019 base, uh, you can see there are, I have two JSON files, which is used by Packer. One to build a, uh, a template based on thick provisioning for disks and one based on thin provisioning. And uh, let's take a look at the thick one because that's the one I actually built. And the way this works is you need to define your variables at the very top. Um, it doesn't matter where, but I usually do that at the very top of the uh, file. As you can see, we have three variables that are declared but not actually defined. They don't have uh, or assigned a value. vSphere server, vSphere user, and vSphere password. Uh, these I have in a separate file that I re will reference as I build the Packer template. Uh, for security reasons, obviously, I don't check it into GitHub. So if you notice my git ignore file, there's this uh, variables.json file that uh, is there so that you know we uh, I don't check those sensitive information into into GitHub. And now I'm using a different machine to record this video, so that's why you don't see the actual variables.json file appear here. So if we go back here, you can see the different things that you define here. So your data center name, uh, your cluster name, your data store name, network folder that you want to uh, save all your templates in. Uh, the name of the VM or the name of the template that you'd like to use, uh, how many CPUs, uh, memory size, the disks, and so on. You can give a Windows admin password. You can also, uh, you, you need to also specify the ISO path for the OS. In my case, I downloaded a free version or a trial version, I should say, the 180 days trial version for Microsoft for Windows Server 2019 and uploaded that ISO uh, file to my data store. I call it, it's called data store 2 non-SSD. Non so you just reference the path here. And then the next section is the builder section. Uh, you can see the builder type is vSphere ISO. IP wait timeout, this is important. Uh, if you don't specify it, the default is, I believe, 30 minutes which is not enough to run this, um, it will fail because it takes a little bit of time to uh, install Windows. So I found that running it or giving it one hour timeout works very well. It gives it enough time to uh, create the template. 
Um, here's where you, you reference the variables that we created in the at the very top of the file, vCenter server, username, password, insecure connection is true because I don't, uh, because I have a self-signed certificate for vCenter. Uh, and you can see data center cluster data store folder <clears throat> and a few other things, right? Now let's go back to the bottom here where floppy files, this is where this auto unattend XML file comes into play. And you can see the different scripts that, uh, that are referenced here. So we're disabling network discovery, uh, enabling RDP, enabling WinRM, install VM tool, set up temp, so all of these are defined in this folder here. So you can go in and take a look at each one of those, see what it actually does. Uh, but then the auto unattend XML file, this file allows you to install uh, Windows in an unattended fashion. So you don't have to go in through the wizard, uh, through the GUI and you know click, click, click. This is uh, done uh, in an unattended fashion by Packer. And that's it, that's pretty much it. Uh, you run this using this command. So if you go into my readme file here, this is actually was built by Guillermo. Uh, you can see how you, you can build a Windows 2016 or Windows uh, Server 2019. But here I added this portion where you need to be inside the Windows 2019 base uh, folder to run this command. And the command is packer build and then uh, var file and reference that variables.json file I talked about earlier where you're defining your sensitive variables and then the win 2019 base thick json which is this file here and once that's done uh, you are going to end up with a template as you'll see here in just a second I have here my vCenter and you can see the templates folder and here's my win 2019 template base thick template already configured and run and it's interesting, as you're running Packer, you can go into vCenter and take a look at the tasks at, as they're running to see what it's actually doing. Okay, so that covers Packer. Now we have a nice shiny template ready to go, and I can use that to, to build a VM. And from here, you can see a bunch of files here for Terraform. I have my main Terraform file, and let me scroll to the top here. You can see the provider is vSphere. And uh, best practice is always to uh, pin the version that you're running. And then the Vim keep alive is 30 minutes. Default is 10. Uh, I recommend giving it a little bit more time uh, for the timeout. And then username, password, vSphere server. These are the same variables we saw earlier in Packer. We still need them here to access vCenter. And uh, I, I can see here, these are variables. So if you look at my variables file, uh, I have them here defined. Uh, or declared, but they're not actually assigned. I assign those variables in a terraform.tf vars file, which you don't see here as well because um, you know git ignore ignores that when we push it into git. Uh, but again, you can do that here as defaults or uh, like I did it with a terraform.tf vars file for security reasons, I don't uh, push it into git. You can also use terraform uh, enterprise or terraform cloud to store these uh, securely those variables securely and you can also use that for uh, storing your state file at the same time here I'm not storing the state file in git uh, so it becomes a little difficult difficult when you have multiple people in the team so you know I invite you to check out Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise for, the, for those reasons another variable here is the Windows template uh, itself uh, as you can see it's the same name that we defined through Packer and it's the same name that shows up in the template folder inside of vCenter. So once I define those variables, I again, allow unverified SSL true because I have a self-signed cert for vCenter. And then the things that I'm pulling from vCenter, I need the name of the data center, the name of the data store. So all these you would know inside of your own vCenter. Uh, the name of the cluster, the network that I'm using, and uh, the template I'm pulling from the variables file. And here's where I'm defining the resource. So this is where I'm gonna build the VM. So I'm gonna give it the name, just machine, keep it simple. And uh, you can see the, the pool ID, the data store ID, all of this is being pulled from the data definitions at the top of the file, number of CPUs, memory, and so on. So you can define all these things here. Now, one thing to note 
the reason why I had a template for thick provisioning and thin provisioning for disks is that you can't mix and match. If you're building a VM based on a thick provision template, you have to use thick provisioning for that VM and vice versa. If you're doing it for thin provisioning, you have to have a thin template. Uh, so that's why here you can see the thin provisioned is false. This is going to be thick provisioned for disk zero and disk one. I have two disks here. And uh, this section is where we're actually going to clone finally the template. Yeah, so there's the reference to the template. And in addition to the cloning, I can customize the VM itself. In this case, with Windows options, I can uh, change the name of the computer itself, so the computer name and the work group as well. And we'll see in just a second what that looks like. Uh, one thing to note here is the network interface that you have to put it in here. And uh, you can see it's an empty, it's an empty object here. And that means that uh, you're going to grab your IP or the IP is going to get assigned through DHCP. If you want to have static IP addresses uh, refer to the docs, you can definitely uh, put in the IP address that you would like assigned to this VM in here. Also, one thing to note is the timeout for customization here. It, I put it as 30 minutes. The default is 10 minutes. Uh, I found that when I left it at the default, uh, I get errors. It doesn't have the chance to finish the customization on time. So 30 minutes works well in this case. And, and then finally, the output here, I'm just showing the output, the IPv4 output and the IPv6 uh, IP address of this machine that got generated. So that's pretty much it. It's very simple. You run your Terraform plan, you run your Terraform apply commands as you're used to, and uh, you can see what gets what will get provisioned. Um, so going back here, you can see my machine is already uh, provisioned. It's up and running. And uh, if I go ahead and uh, console into it, I want to show you the computer name and I want to show you the... Um, the, uh, the yeah so the computer name is machine here I can show you the work group is also test that's in the customization section that we uh, that we showed earlier and as you can see it's Windows Server 2019 standard uh, evaluation is is what I'm running here um, and that's pretty much it this gives us uh, an overview of what uh, what you can do uh, so what we did today is uh, very simply created a a template inside of uh, vCenter or vSphere using Packer, uh, and this was done for Windows Server 2019. Uh, and then from there, we used Terraform to create a VM based on that template, or you can call it a gold image. You can build gold images like that with Packer, and then uh, we use Terraform to actually build a VM uh, based on that template. Of course, you're not limited to Windows. You can run Linux servers. You can do a whole lot of thing, different things with Packer and Terraform. Hopefully this has been helpful and thank you for watching.